This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. This is a mainland reticulated python, one of the longest snakes in the world. These guys can get nearly 25 feet long. They certainly are the giants. But do all reticulated pythons get that large? You're watching Snake Bites. My name is Brian Barchek. I'm no zoologist, just a guy with a passion for animals. And that passion often takes me on animal adventures around the world. This week, I'll be outside Los Angeles, California at Reptile Avenue. You're watching Snake Bites. So guys, tell me about Reptile Avenue. When did the whole thing start? I mean, have you guys been kind of together in the whole thing, recently got together? Yes, we've been working together for a couple of years now, I would say about four or five. Um, Reptile Avenue is the retail. It's how we uh, sell our the animals that we produce. Okay, so did you guys have separate collections prior to this and then kind yes. of got together? Yes, yes, I met him uh, through the shows and uh, we uh, figure out a few things and start working together. Yeah, sometimes collaborative things yeah, work out it's well. It's easier for me because I work full time, so it's harder for me to take pictures, answer all the emails and everything else. So it allows me to take care of the animals and do the breedings and he can do all the pictures and answering and talking to the people. Obviously, when you think reticulated pythons, typically you think of pretty giant snakes, right? Correct. And this girl is how long? I would say about 18 feet long. 18 foot, and I tell you what, we've been messing with this girl for about the last half hour. She's quite a handful, isn't yes, she? Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that's interesting is this is a mainland variety, right? Correct. Okay, and now there's a bunch of island forms that are locality specific, correct? Correct. All right, and tell me a little bit about the difference between the island forms and the mainland forms. Uh, the main difference will be the size. Okay. Uh, after that, we get the pattern and color mutations too. Okay. Um, the size is what we all know them for. Uh, for example, jampias, that will be considered dwarf, dwarf and a lot smaller than this. So the jampias get about 10 foot or so? Usually that's the mark. They could grow larger, but 10 feet is the, is the, is the mark. Okay, and then now there's some locality islands that actually stay smaller than the jampias, right? Yes, there is. Uh, there is the super dwarf, super uh, dwarf, and those are the smaller islands and they can grow six feet in, and, and usually stay at that, at that. So we're talking about an adult reticulated python at six foot. When you're having an animal like an 18 footer, it's pretty cool to think that there's this beautiful pattern without all the mass of snakes. So let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, why don't you show me a jampea to start with? Sure, let's take a look. So Danny, this is what you were talking about with the jampeas, right? Yes. Okay, so this is an adult female you told me. Yes, this is a seven-year-old female. Seven years old, and what would you say the length on this animal is? Um, this particular female, it's right about 10, maybe 11 feet long. Okay, and we know that the mainlands, you know, they can have huge numbers of eggs, you know, 60 plus eggs. Uh, what does a girl this size lay? Uh, 25 eggs, uh, the last clutch was a, a 25 egg clutch. Really, so that's actually pretty impressive. So what I, I think is amazing about this animal is the fact that, you know, if you love reticulated pythons, but you know, they really are big animals and they're not for everybody. A dwarf is much more manageable. Something that's gonna get 10, maybe 12 foot long is certainly not a bad animal for a, a little bit more of an experienced keeper. This isn't a first time you know, owner snake, but, but certainly you can see how placid it is and it's just incredible. So you get all the beauty of a retic in, in an animal that's maybe like a big boa or a huge carpet python. So the one thing I kind of noticed as we're handling her is that She's not the color of a normal retic. What's up with that? No, no, she's not. She's actually an anery. Yeah. And anery, it's a recess recessive mutation. Uh, and, and it's usually uh, what we use to make the snows on retics. Exactly. And basically, the anery is uh, lacking the red pigment, kind of giving it that more silvery look. So it's a cool mutation. Now, you've been able to breed these into some mainland mutations and get some pretty cool stuff, right? Correct, yeah. We now um, are working with that, and we have produced some pretty cool stuff. Um, use the mainland uh, mutations into the dwarfs and super dwarfs. Now when you mix that mainland blood into a dwarf, you're going to get a little bit larger snake, right? Because it's got that mainland blood? Correct. Okay, well, I tell you what guys, let's just take a look at a couple of really cool mutation jampeas. 
So the Jampea babies actually hatch out much smaller than the normal reticulated python because they're dwarfs. And again, they grow a little slower as well. Believe it or not, this happens to be a year-old annery Jampea. And you can see it's not much larger than, say, a month or maybe two-month-old mainland reticulated python. But it certainly is a beautiful animal. Now, when you start to breed the color mutations from the mainland animals into the Jampeas, of course, you're not just breeding that phenotype or color, but you're also breeding a little of the size, so the animals are definitely going to get larger. This happens to be an annery tiger jampea, which is <laughs> really cool. And the jampea kind of changes the overall color a little bit. And again, the tiger gene is a co-dominant mutation and the recessive mutation of the annery attached. And you know, this animal is going to probably get maybe up to 18 foot because of the mainland gene in, but it's definitely going to stay a little bit smaller than the normal mainland. And just putting that jampea blood in changes the overall appearance of the animal so much. They're definitely cool. They're little feisty buggers too. And take a look at this mutation. Now this thing absolutely blew me away. This happens to be a lavender albino tiger Jampea that of course is het for annery. Now sometimes het anneries can have a little bit of a different color to them as well. So this one looks really different than say a normal lavender albino tiger reticulated python. Just to look at the way those colors pop. Again, it's just a little bit more rich color. This thing is absolutely cool. And again, it's awesome that they're not gonna be 20 plus foot long. Man, these dwarf retics are cool. So what's next for Reptile Avenue? I mean, you guys have a retail store. Um, you have a wholesale business. I mean, what, what's on the horizon? Um, the goal will be for him to work full time on the reptile, like right. me. Right. Uh, we're working towards that. Uh, hopefully, within the next year or so, we can uh, accomplish that. And I think that will be the goal of every reptile. Yeah, keeper. that and of course, like, we try to work with as much locale retics as I can. Right. So Danny, what we have here is this is uh, the next phase, right? This is the super dwarf, right? Correct. This is the most popular locale. Uh, this is a Kalatoa Island super dwarf. And how old is this girl here? This particular girl is two years old. Two years old? Correct. I mean, that's pretty impressive. I mean, uh, a mainland at two years, what would you expect that to be? Um, a female right about nine feet. That's a pretty huge difference, guys. Nine foot, and that's what maybe I mean, it's um, long, four foot probably, probably about but four. the difference is the mainland's gonna be probably that big around as opposed to a quarter size. So this is a two-year-old animal, but you're about to show me a, a full-grown adult female, right? Correct. All right, let's take a look. Sure. It's always so cool to see this stuff. <laughs> so, Danny, I, I don't even, this is an adult female right here? This is a, a six-year-old adult female super dwarf. <laughs> this is absolutely crazy that this is an adult. So this is an adult female retic in a CB7041 corp tub. Correct. Now, now that's absolutely incredible. You can keep them in the same size tub as a ball python. Now the one thing you can see as soon as I open this cage up, she's, she's ready to go. Now the one thing that you definitely see with dwarfs and super dwarfs is that they have a little bit more energy and that they're a little bit more feisty. So let's see if we can get this girl up without her getting in on me. Oh, she's not too bad right now. I think I might be okay, but again, they're definitely a little bit more feisty of animals. They have more energy, and I think that that mainly is because they don't have that body girth. Let's face it, when you have 300 pounds of mass that you have to pull around, that's, that's a lot of cardio that a snake Correct. goes through. This is, a, this is an adult female. Now, this is crazy. Now, we said the Jampeas have you know, 20, 25 eggs. Is it, is it less for the, the super dwarfs? Yes, uh, this particular female, last clutch was uh, six, 16 eggs. Ooh, 16, so they will have 16 eggs. Now, I gotta tell you, what's amazing about that right. is that, uh, yeah, she got me a little bit, but that's all right, it doesn't matter. She's a, she's a baby, puppy dog. Again, they just have a little more energy, you know? And again, you can see right here, she's starting to shed a little bit. That probably is aiding to her kind of being a little bit more nasty as well, which is totally fine. So 16 eggs, I find that pretty interesting, seeing that she's not that big of a girl. So are the eggs quite a bit smaller than the male? Yes, I mean, uh, obviously they are. are. Uh, we weigh them in at so 85 grams. 85 grams, so they're as like ball python, the ball python eggs. Ball python eggs. eggs. Wow. Whew. Oh, come on, girl. Oh. <laughs> you always get the goosebumps when snakes come back on you. I don't care how many times you get bit, especially a reticulated python. Wow, that's a beautiful snake. I, tell you what, I think I'm going to put her back because she's starting to shed and I feel bad that I'm peeling her a little bit. Well, Danny, I'm telling you what, I'm absolutely blown away 
at dwarf and super dwarf reticulated pythons. Now, although this curl's a little bit nasty, it's certainly pretty cool to know that you can keep a retic in a ball python cage. I mean, what a great alternative. So let me ask you one last thing. Uh, when you breed a super dwarf into a mutation, what's the size with that, that mainland? Um, we get, it all depends uh, if you do a pure locality to a mainland, you get 50% that locality. Uh, usually 50% uh, dwarf or super dwarf are in the eight foot range. Okay, gotcha. Now the idea would be to probably breed the super dwarf into a mainland and then breed it back to a super Correct. dwarf and continue to get it down. Now, now uh, once you get into the third or fourth generation, you're probably staying under six or seven foot again, right? I would, I would think so. We're working on that. Uh, we have a third generation going this year, so we should find out soon. I tell you what, I have to one day own uh, an albino lavender, albino tiger that only gets six foot long because that would be an awesome snake. So I'm here with John, the other half of Reptile Avenue. Now, John, you basically are more of the like the breeding of the big stuff. Danny is the pretty guy that everyone wants to buy from and yeah. works with the other stuff. Yeah. So, uh, so we've talked about the dwarf retics, we've talked about the super dwarfs, but but there's a whole bunch of different localities, right? Yeah. So let's start by uh, the dwarf. So you have a, a, another locality of dwarf. Yeah, the, the cellular color. Locality. Okay, so you gotta watch out for them. They're yeah, so more they're, flighty. A little, they're a little more flighty, right? So, but it's another so smaller is, animal. Now, this um, is more like the Jampeas, though. Yeah, more size wise. Okay, uh, it's more red than the Jampeas. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. This is definitely a much more so that's your, something you're gonna see with the localities is really the visually, it's gonna maybe yeah. a little bit different pattern, a little more color differences. And, um, and how many of the dwarf island? localities are there. I know there's Cellular, then there's the Kaoatis, and then there's like Krampa, and there's Sunny Island, okay. uh, Kalatoa, which are the, more of the super dwarf stuff. Gotcha. So there's, there's quite a right. few. And now is it difficult with, I know we've, we, we talked about the fact that like the golden child, some people thought they were kind of a dwarf as well. Yeah, they, it's hard to track where things are from, right? Well, supposedly it came from the Cellular Islands, they thought. Okay. But and that's a dwarf version. It's supposed to be a dwarf, but I have one that's 18 feet. So that's 18 foot, right? You know. Now, it was yours bred into mainland at all, or that's supposed to be? It's a head albino, so yeah. <laughs> that one almost got me. That's all right. That was a little overreaction by me. I apologize about that. Sorry, you said it was bred into. It was. It's head albino. So it's head albino. So, so it was one of the original breedings, right? Because well, I got her. It was, she's an 06. So. Right. Gotcha. And in. So with these guys, is have you got this particular lo locality into any mutations yet? Because with this red color, I would I, imagine it would really change the albino. Yeah, I, I don't have it here. I do have a platinum that's okay, spread into it, and it, it changes the pattern and the color of the yellow mutation, and it gives it more of a silver side. Now, have you got, you know, we see with these guys that, like, obviously, they're a little more high strung, obviously. Uh, over time, is it starting to, to calm down at all? I mean, is there, you know, when you breed them into mainland stuff, are we, we starting to see stuff chill out a little bit? Yeah, or? the flattened version, she's really calm. Okay. Um, I think it's another thing that's a lot to do with handling. When you're, when you're, right. like, you know, when you're breeding stuff, you don't handle a lot just when you, you clean right, the cage. Right, exactly. Or, so, or, I mean, it is certainly theoretical that you could have a dwarf or a super dwarf that would be very docile. Yeah. Okay. You know, I think it's a really interesting alternative to, uh, if you want kind of a little more of an exciting animal as, as compared to, say, some of the more you know, traditional mutations or, 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 or species of animals to work with. And reticulated pythons are, again, we talked about earlier, are really kind of an intelligent animal. I mean, even this animal you can see is kind of, you know, figuring things out and, yeah. and, um, and she's definitely calming down now. When you first took her out, she was a little bit hyper and stuff yeah. like that, but now she's figuring it out and she's all right. So, and you know, this is a, you can see, gosh, she keys on so quick. I mean, reticulated pythons are amazing animals. I mean, as soon as you move, they just, they're so intelligent. They just pick it up, they key on it, they focus on it. And then a second later, she's crawling on you like nothing. But again, a, a retic like this is really incredible that you can keep it in a size tub like this for its whole life. So um, this is awesome. So what we have here is we have another uh, locality of dwarf retic, and holy cow, is she unbelievably keyed on you, and she's ready to go. Woo! <laughs> what an awesome animal. Oh my gosh. This is a pistol. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I don't want to get peed on more than anything. I don't mind getting bit so much, but the peeing on part is the hard thing. Now again, this animal looks really different than the other location. The other one was, was really red and this yeah, one's this very silverish 
Right. Now, would this be like this isn't azanthic because of the eyes, or is it or anthracic? It's, it's an import, so I mean, it's the Kawadi Island. I don't know, you know, until proving it out. Like I said, a lot of the seems like a lot of the dwarf stuff carries that gene, or, or it has you know has the gene in it. So without reading it, you don't really know. Again, um, I, I find it just amazing how different the localities are, and these are all South Pacific islands. And you can see even the, the different patterns, and even the even compared to the Jampia, the silver and everything is a little different. Wow. What a gorgeous snake, huh? Whew. <laughs> and again, once you get these guys out, they calm down a little bit, but it just seems like it takes one second for them to, to kind of trigger. Yeah. What a beautiful snake. Hey, if the, the audience wants to get in touch with you guys, what's the best way to catch you? Uh, we do have a website running. Uh, it's reptileavenue.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a Facebook page and uh, of course uh, email and, and phone number. That's good. Well, keep up the good work, guys. Thank you so much Thank for having me on. Thank you for coming by. Thanks, Thank you. guys. Thanks. So I've had a really amazing time spending the day learning about reticulated pythons in these localities that actually stay relatively small. This is a mainland and it's really gorgeous. It's a lavender albino tiger golden trout and what a stunning animal. I tell you, I've got a love for these animals like you can't believe and to think that this animal one day might only get six foot just makes it that much more cool. For this week's Reptile Report, we'll be highlighting amphibians. Go ahead and check out the URL down below or click on the link in the description. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. What an amazing time seeing all those cool reticulated pythons. And as always, I was Facebooking and tweeting my way through it. So make sure to follow me over at Snake Bites TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Hi, I'm Peter Birch, an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then, it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes only on Animal Bites TV.